just cleaned up my travel watercolor palette and it's something that you don't typically do is clean your watercolor palette because every tiny little drop of dried crusty watercolor can be used. Um, I probably should have done this before I cleaned it up but you can see on this is my bigger palette that I use um, when I've got um, projects to work on at my desk and I use I actually still use my travel palette when I'm using this one I usually have this palette my travel palette and a couple extra little dishes that I'm mixing colors in just because uh, I'm weird but um, you can see that um, these Tr these mixing trays still have the the dried up paint in them from the last time I painted and typically you don't clean these out or wash them out because you can use all you have to do is add more water and you can use these colors as long as they're there the only time you want to clean it out is if they get kind of muddy or if you're working on a new project and you, you're just going to be using a completely new palette, color palette. Um, but typically you'll just leave your, your watercolor palette kind of messy. Um, this one's kind of nice. This is also portable. It seals and it has this removable tray. So these are kind of nice. There's tons and tons of different color palettes that you can choose from that, you know, based on what your needs are. And then this one, so when I got it, all of these wells were empty and I would use my, um, my tube watercolors to just put a little blob in each corner of the well. And then you just, uh, if you can see that, you just leave them dry like that and then when you want to use them you just add some water this is something that I've kind of discovered along the way really easy way to add water without having to dip your brush a hundred times to bring water over to your well is just give them a little squirt depending on how much water you want to use but that's kind of a quick way to get the you know the water incorporated into the paint and be ready to go quickly so that's just a little tip there these are just products that I like and that have worked for me so this is my it's a Winsor & Newton watercolor palette and I'm just going to assemble it here so that you can see but it comes with these little pans of watercolor and they're dry and then you just add you know it's just basically just like your Crayola watercolor that you got when you were a kid or you still use and there's nothing wrong with that these are just a little bit higher quality. This is like an artist quality watercolor, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with using, starting out with like a, you know, something that you buy at Walmart or Target or something like that. I would say that if it's something that you think you wanna really get into, go ahead and invest the money in a higher quality set right off the bat, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting started with a Crayola set or, you know, something from Michaels that's their store brand. But the, the more you get into it, the more you're gonna learn that the higher quality paints really do, really are worth it. Uh, it's usually just a one-time investment. This watercolor travel set, I think is about maybe 30 or $40, but I've had this for like 10 years. So, and you can order, you know, if you run out of these little pans of color, you can order the replacements or, you know, like I do, you can just use your, your tube watercolors and just fill them. When you buy the tube watercolors, these are more expensive, but you probably are only gonna have to buy it once because they last forever. You just need a tiny little bit every time you fill your palette. So let's get this assembled and I'll show you how it works and then we'll go from there. Okay, I have to remember what order my paints went in. This, all right, so this is a little drawer that pops out at the bottom that has extra mixing wells in it. And honestly, I didn't even know it existed until, you know, a couple of years after I had this, 
I saw a picture of it online and I was like, well, what's that extra drawer down there? And then I realized I could pull it out of mine. So it just slides in like this. This is a little well for, I think it's meant to hold your water, but it's not big enough for me. I usually carry a little plastic cup from like applesauce or something like that for my mixing water. And then the lid goes on. And the reason I pulled mine apart and cleaned it up was because I just got back from a trip. I went to see my mom. I had to I had to close it up real quickly before the paints were were dry and so this um, orange that I had in this well here just gummed up everything and everything was sticking together. I couldn't even open it. So I decided to go ahead and clean it out. But let's put everything back the way it was. These are my yellows. Actually, I am going to pop this color out of here because I don't really use it that much and I'm going to this is a China white and it's not quite opaque enough for me when I want a white so I'm gonna pop this out of here clean it out and add some white gouache the white gouache is gonna be more opaque and give more coverage and um, it'll kind of make my, when I mix it with my colors, it'll make them more sort of like a pastel and give them more of an opaque finish. Oop, I can hear those hawks outside. I'm gonna have to go lock up my chickens. Okay, so here's a little rundown of the colors in my watercolor palette. These are pretty standard colors. Depending on what you use, you may run into different shades, but this is what I have and you'll get a little education on the different shades. So the first one here is cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow is a warm yellow closer to the orangish spectrum. This is Hansa Yellow Deep, and Hansa Yellow is a, a lighter, brighter yellow than cadmium. It leans toward the greenish end of the spectrum, but Hansa Yellow Deep is a little warmer than Hansa Yellow Light, which is a little bit greener. So if you wanted to mix yellow and orange, you would use cadmium yellow with orange. And if you wanted to mix yellow and green to make a yellowish green, you would use Hansa yellow. If you used a cadmium yellow with green, um, you're still gonna get a yellowish green, but it might just be a little less pure than the bright yellow green um, like a lime, like a true lime green. This one is cadmium red, which is a warm red. And this is cadmium red light, which is a little bit lighter version of this one. And they're both very warm. Uh, cadmium red light is a little bit more on the orange side than cadmium red, but they're both gonna be warm reds. Um, this one is called Purple Lake which is a sort of a violet-ish end of red. So in here, I don't really have a true, true red, which is going to be a sort of like a, a vermilion might be a little bit more on the orange side too. I don't have a true, true red here, but I do in my other palette. 
this one is, oh, what was the name of this one? Oh, this is Crimson. So this is a, a reddish purple also. So these are warm reds and these are cool purplish reds. Right here we have Ultramarine Blue, which is a purplish end of blue. So if you wanted to mix a violet color, you might mix a purplish red with a purplish blue and then you'll get a violet or a purple color. Um, this is cerulean blue, which is more of like a pure sort of, um, hmm. I guess I would say a warmer blue. It's more of a greenish blue, but it's not a pure, pure, true royal blue or a cobalt blue. It's a little bit warm and a little bit lighter. This is viridian green, which is a real bright um, pop of green. And then here we have sap green, which is more of like an earthy, leafy, um, warm green. Burnt umber, which is a real dark brown, which is, I hardly use. Sienna is a real warm, kind of earthy brown. And ochre is like a brownish yellow, I guess you could say. And then I filled this pan with the white gouache, which is going to be a more opaque white. Um, just takes a tiny little bit to mix with any of these colors to get them sort of opaque and lightened, which I don't do very often. You can also go over a, a, water, a, uh, a watercolor wash, like if you wanted to make stars or something like that, you would use a white gouache. Up here, uh, and this is part of the reason why I cleaned my palette because I had warm and cool colors on the same side and they were starting to mix with each other and it was just making a mess. So here I have uh, Quinacridone Rose, which is a reddish pink. It's, it's pretty red. It's, it's more red than it is pink, but it's a real pretty color. This is going to be a Quinacridone Violet, which is a deeper more purplish shade. This is Azo Orange, which is a really nice, solid, good mixing orange. Right here is Turquoise, which is turquoise, greenish blue, right, kind of like right in the middle of green and blue. And then this is called Phthalo Blue, and honestly, I could drink this color. I love it so much. I use it in most of my artwork that has blue in it, acrylic paint and watercolor paint has this shade of blue. It's just this really delicious, yummy shade of a really, really deep blue on the greenish scale. So whereas ultramarine blue is purplish, phthalo blue is greenish. It's the, you know, it's that oceany color. So that's probably my favorite. Down here we have a pink gouache, which is different from watercolor. Just like this white gouache, it's gonna be opaque and solid and it dries to a matte texture. And then here is an opera rose pink watercolor, which is just a, the perfect shade of like hot pink if you really want a nice hot pink color. And then I have a permanent green light opaque gouache. And then I left myself a little mixing room for something else. So there's my palette. I usually have a green, some type of green mixture in my well here, ready to start and uh, add to my current project. Let me know if you have any questions about colors. I'd Color is one of my favorite things, and I'll probably do a video on color mixing and the color wheel and why you blend certain colors with others and what reactions you have. So,